Hi, I'm Phil Hearn and I'm a director of MRDC Software and today I'm going to be talking to you about the pros and cons of buying cheaper software and I know there's some cynics out there who are going to say that I know what he's going to say. He's going to say, don't buy cheap software. Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about some of the reasons for buying cheaper software and some of the reasons for not buying cheaper software. And that might be unexpected, perhaps, uh, for people who know me. They know that I run a software company that sells some very uh, advanced and complete software packages that do everything from data collection, data analysis, tabulation, automated reporting and right on through to providing data visualization tools in dashboards. So I'm going to talk to you today about when I think cheap software is the right thing to do, some tricks where you can perhaps use cheaper software uh, for certain things and where there's some dangers of using cheaper software. So I hope it's a balanced sort of podcast this where you're going to get a bit of everything and you can think about what might meet your needs best. So let's start by looking at the pros of uh, using cheaper software. And if you Google uh, free market research software, I quickly found a website that told me there were 25 free uh, packages that I could use. Um, I don't know if I believe that or not, but that's what it said. And I have no reason to disbelieve it. But it proved to me there are plenty out there. And if you look around, you can find tools that will do Most of the things you want to do in market research, they might be collecting some data, doing some tables, doing a few charts, even perhaps producing a dashboard. I'm not sure that is free, but there's some tools out there that will help you with your market research software, market research surveys um, that can be used either at very low cost, free or, you know, at, at, at very competitive price points. So when should you use these projects, the products? So when should you use these products? Well, let's start by saying that if a software product is free or cheap and it does what you need, it might be the right product for you. So don't rule that out. It could be just what you need. And if you've got a one-off survey and you've found something that can collect that data free of charge and give you the analysis that your client requires, whether that be some charts or some tables, there's probably not a good reason for using that free software. Well, there might be. We'll come to that in a minute, but it might be something that suits your needs. What else? Well, I think when you're learning something, there's no need to buy a top end package uh, that's going to perhaps cost you several thousand pounds. There's software that does data collection, for example, online surveys that ranges from free right up to five figures in terms of dollars and more, I think. So, you need to perhaps think what if I'm learning something new or offering a new service as your business, perhaps you want to just start with something that's cheap or low cost or even free that will perhaps get you into that market and let you grow gradually. So don't rule out that if you're setting up a new business or you're setting up a new department or growing a type of business within your company, let's use a free product and get used to perhaps what the clients want and so on. But let's perhaps at the same time not invest too much time learning that product because it might mean that it might, you know, it might spend several hours or days learning how to use it well. And that if it doesn't really do what I want, that's time wasted. So, but, you know, it could be just do the job for you. And certainly if it's your first project or you've got someone new joining, that really falls into the same category. No reason at all why you might not want to use a free piece of software or one of the cheaper products that are out there when you Google away and find a cheap software product. Now, perhaps choosing the right one can be difficult. And I find that I don't like these lists that the free software products tend to put out where they sort of have tick boxes for all the features that it's got, but actually don't have crosses for the things it hasn't got. It just gives you lots of ticks. I don't find those very useful and they can actually take your mind away from what you really need. So sometimes it's better to write down the features you need and then see if they're ticked or not. 
and then perhaps inquire. And I sort of mean by that something like sometimes you perhaps want some complex, you might want a very simple server, but it's got a couple of complex routings within the questionnaire. And maybe the free package that you found does everything you want, but it can't do that one complex routing that you need. So look at what your requirements are. What outputs do you want at the end? And again, with some of these free products, they perhaps don't get the data out in a form that you or if your client wants the data, um, you need to consider that. So do look at the whole list of things that you've got to do before you go in too far. Now, from that, we can go to really what might be, as far as usage goes, free products. Um, tools that you might already have on your machine are very good at doing surveys. Google Forms is an example. It can let you collect data that perhaps doesn't look the most attractive or the most flexible that you ever, you've ever perhaps put together or could put together with more advanced software. But if it does what you want and you perhaps got a small sample, Google Forms might collect data for you just as you want it so that you can analyze it. And the same goes for Excel. Excel has some nice tools in there for doing tables. They're called pivot tables in Excel. But just watching an online video will quickly show you how to do that. And whilst you might not get the flexibility you get of some of the more advanced paid for systems, pivot tables can quite quickly get results from a small survey. And both Google Forms and Excel for doing analysis and charts are both very good tools for perhaps doing a small survey with not too many questions, but doing it effectively without buying any software. Now, it's time to say one or two things about some of the free platforms that are out there, all the low cost platforms out there. Do be careful with their pricing policy and do look at how that works. I know there's some free platforms out there that say perhaps you can do a thousand interviews online uh, and produce up to so many tables or charts or whatever it might be. But you quickly find that they get expensive once you get committed to them. So they need to be looked at because it's no good that you get your first thousand interviews free, but you actually plan, plan to uh, do 50,000 interviews over a year and then financially the cost is much dearer than buying a platform where there's either no cost for the for the number of inter based on the number of interviews that you actually conduct or that the cost is fairly marginal for extra interviews. So that's something I really would encourage people to look at that when you start with some of these free or cheaper platforms, look at the pricing when you start to get volume um, because it might start to increase quite quickly and end up more expensive than some of the uh, uh, the some of the paid for uh, licensed products. Now let's look at the dangers. I did say that I was going to do pros and cons, and I think I've given you a good insight here into where the free and cheaper products can pay off. Now let's look at the cons or the dangers of using these free and cheap products besides the pricing policies, which can be uh, tempting at first, but then then uh, not quite work later on when, when your volumes grow. Now for the biggest dangers, I'm going to use an acronym out, O-U-T. So there's three things I think you need to look for when you're uh, perhaps considering looking at or using a free or cheaper product. So O for out, the first letter of out is you might outgrow it. So if you're building something new, uh, like a new branch to your business, uh, perhaps you're doing online communities or something like that, um, how much is it going to grow? And can the platform or the software that you're choosing grow with you do you need to have more power as that as that business grows can it handle the sample sizes that you want if you have a big survey come in of 10,000 respondents can it handle that some some can and certainly most of the licensed products can but some of the cheaper ones can't so look at what you might want in the future if you're going to outgrow it very quickly, that's not a be a good investment of your time because all software or most software 
needs time to get familiar with and to learn the best ways of using it and making the most of it. So there's no point in expending a week or so of your time getting good at a piece of software that you're going to outgrow two months later because you're just going to have to go through that learning curve again, perhaps to get the most out of another product. So look at that. And of course, outgrowing it because of flexibility. Can it do all of the tables, analyses, charts, whatever it is you want? Can it do all of those things um, that you're looking for? The U stands for undeliverable. So it's no good if you can't deliver what your clients are going to need. And it might be nice that you get a project in, but then if the client's going to say to you, well, can you put me out some tables like this or some charts like this or deliver me a dashboard so that I can interact with this data or perhaps go online and browse the data myself. If the if the free or cheap platform that you've chosen just can't deliver that, it means that you're going to be in a situation where what the client is asking is just undeliverable. And then to change suddenly is going to be difficult because if you've got your data uh, already collected and the client's going to ask for a bit more from what you want to be or you're able to deliver, you're going to be in trouble and you might well lose that client. So consider what deliverables you've got and make sure that what they are going to ask for is not undeliverable. And the first, the, sorry, the last uh, thing on out is T for trapped. It's easy to get trapped into a piece of software. Um, you might be very pleased with yourself when you've won your first big tracking study. But then if the client wants to add complexity, are you trapped in something that just can't handle that complexity? And the sort of things I'm thinking of here are, let's, let's stick with a tracking study as an example. Let's say that you want to change the questionnaire after a couple of months and add a couple of questions in and take a couple of questions out because that's what the client wants to do with their tracking study, something that's quite a normal thing to happen. Can the software you're using that's a cheaper product handle that? It may be able to, and if it can, that's great, but you might start to need a product that can handle those data complexities. What if they want to be able to collect some of the data through interviewers using CAPI? Can it handle data being collected in that way? Maybe you want to send out some paper questionnaires as well. If it's only an online system, it's not going to be to have to handle that, or you're going to be in the difficult situation where you've got to print off questionnaires and someone's got to enter that data manually. So. Look at what might happen to particularly tracking studies or surveys that might be repeated every three months or every year. They're particularly product uh, projects where you can easily get trapped. So there's some background into my thinking about what you should look for in uh, software, whether it's a good idea to buy cheaper software. And I think there are occasions where that's true and where it can be a bad idea. And as ever at MRDC Software, we like to be really open with our customers. And if you come to us and tell us what you're trying to achieve and what your problems are, we'll help you unpick the dangers and try to advise you because we don't want you using our software if it's way beyond what you need and needs too much learning. We'd like to say to you, well, you know, use a free or cheap piece of software to do what you're trying to do when you grow in two years time to a size where you know you need our products yes come to us then and we'll try to help you to get into our software and learn how to use it and make the most of your market research software well i hope that podcast was useful there'll be several more podcasts coming up soon there's already been a few so please check our website www.mrdcsoftware.com Always have a look at the blog section because there's some really interesting blog articles in there that can help you get the most from the software in market research. Thank you for listening. If you've got any questions, don't be afraid to contact me at phil.hearn, H-E-A-R-N, at mrdcsoftware.com. Thank you. Goodbye.